And I thank you for all you've done and meant to me. I praise you, Lord. Have your way in this place. In your name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated tonight. Last night, one of our kids asked Sister Katie if she was planning on wrapping some presents. And it was getting late in the evening, so my wife was on the fence about whether or not she should uh, wrap anything. She was getting a little bit tired. She'd been shopping and all that. And I'm not the greatest at wrapping, so that's all on her, right? Uh, Well, um, when she asked why they were so concerned about it, uh, they replied, because I want to see some gifts under there in the morning. So when I heard that, I, I felt like I had this really clever idea. And I ran and I crawled up under the tree. And I said, now you've got a gift under the tree. That wasn't what they were looking forward to. It wasn't a good enough gift. But the reason why they asked for my wife to put some presents under there is because they have some expectations that are associated with Christmas. There is something promising. Everybody say that word, promising. There's something promising about the Christmas season. And I know it goes beyond just the gifts. I believe that promising atmosphere stems from the promise being delivered on Christmas. I think you can see it uh, throughout the, the, the season. People t- tend to be a little bit uh, nicer, uh, and, and uh, they tend to say thank you, and they're a little more giving. Their hearts are a little warmer this time of year. Something happens, and it's not magic because we don't believe in that kind of stuff. There's something promising about Christmas. I think more people, though, missed the coming of the promise than who saw it. But if you read in the Christmas story, every single person who took the time and noticed the promise, noticed the one who came, noticed the greatest gift of all time, for those people, everything changed. Everything changed. Think about it. Mary and Joseph, they were counted worthy parents of the Messiah. I mean, God God specifically chose them to bring life of the Savior and to parent them. I mean, that's amazing to me. And their lives were changed by that gift, right? The wise men, they saw the signs. I mean, those men, we're going to talk about them here in a minute, but, but they saw the signs. They were looking for, for the star to come. And they, when they saw it, they worshipped, they rejoiced, they had great joy. They, then they, they heard the voice of God in a dream. I mean, Their lives were changed by the gift. Zacharias and Elizabeth, they have a child. They both get filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, their story is amazing in and of itself, but but they realize the birth of their John is to herald in the birth of Jesus, and their lives were completely changed by the gift. Simeon, I mean, he had been living a long time waiting to see the promise of the Lord come. And finally, when when Mary and Joseph, after eight days of Jesus' being born, go into the temple, there is Simeon. He's, He's waiting, watching, and the Holy Ghost drives him there. He's led by the Holy Spirit. And he sees the Messiah. And his life, it was probably very brief after that moment, but it was changed. Anna, same story. She was an older lady, was in the temple doing what she always did. But the gift came and her life was changed. The shepherds, I mean, think about the shepherds who all they ever did was talk to sheep. Now, do you all ever talk to sheep? I've heard sheep are pretty smart. Sister Sister Fordyce often talked about some of those sheep that she had, how they would remember her voice even years later. But I'll tell you what, a sheep doesn't make for very good conversation. But on that night, while they were doing their faithful duty to the flocks, the angels came, told them of a gift, and that gift changed everything. Aren't you thankful for the gift that changes everything? Maybe you think of a gift in your life that you received from your parents, maybe from a loved one, 
or maybe just from some random person, but it changed your perspective on some things. And that's good. It's always good to get a gift like that. But there's only one gift that changes everything. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And I want to talk about that gift for a few minutes tonight. First of all, about that gift, it was the gift. He was the gift that redeemed. Praise the Lord. He redeemed us. I mean, you think about it. Luke chapter 1, verse 68, Zechariah says it this way. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Then if you look, I think it is in Luke chapter 2, verse 38, when Anna, she is, uh, she is speaking about him, and she says, uh, she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption. In Jerusalem. Well, I'll tell you what, when God sent his son, Emmanuel, God with us, not only did he come to visit his people, but he came to redeem his people. Just a few hours ago, Brother Brother Jones talked about how God works while we wait. And the whole time what that the people of God and even uh, beyond them had been waiting for the promise of redemption. Think about it. God promised redemption way back in Genesis. Centuries and centuries gone by, finally Jesus is born and God is working while everyone is waiting. I mean, he was building the road, preparing the avenue that redemption would ride in on. And you think about his, his only son sent down for he, from heaven for one purpose. What was that purpose? To become, to become sin for us. He knew no sin, yet he became sin for us. Why? So he could redeem us. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said in John chapter 3, the purpose that he came was to give those who believe life for all eternity. It wasn't so he could come and condemn and say, why have you rejected my gifts? Why have you disobeyed and fallen after idols? Why have you done this? His, his motive wasn't condemnation, but complete redemption. The Word became flesh, and He dwelt among the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. Yet He came anyway to redeem us. Praise the Lord. Somebody was asked one time, what was the best name for God? What's the best name for God? And and they they could only reply this way, I guess the best name for God is, is the way you need Him right then and there. So you can call on him as father, you can cry out to him as healer, you can run to him as strong tower, you can lean on him as defender, but I'll tell you what, you, we may not all be, get, become sick and we may not all face situations that, that we need him in that name in that hour, but every single one of us stood in need of a redeemer. And we've got to call out to him as redeemer. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the gift that redeems. Another thing about this gift, the gift of Jesus on Christmas, is it was a gift that removed all labels and all limitations. Hallelujah. He, he removed every label. The angels said to the shepherds as they kept watch of their flocks, this, this will be for all people. Everybody say all. It will be, uh, this gift, this child, will be for all people. Matthew 24, verse 14. Jesus is speaking here and he's talking about the end times. And he says, this gospel of the kingdom shall shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all. All nations, and then shall the end come. Praise the Lord. I was talking to the youth the other day and youth about how Jesus hasn't came, and it's just because of his long suffering, waiting for more people to come to knowledge of him as Savior. I'm thankful for that. But one thing he said, it wasn't just for one area of the world, it wasn't just for a limited time, but it was for all people of all times. And this gospel will be preached. Amen. To every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every ethnicity. I'm thankful the gift removed the limitations and the label that man would put on a man-made gospel. Praise God. Listen, everything that God ever did in his word pointed man to the gospel. He removed labels and limitations 
One thing I love about it is he did not try to conceal it from anyone. Yes, I know there was times when when Jesus would ask people, hey, don't make my name known right now. It's not my time. But he wasn't trying to conceal from any of us who he really was and the gospel, what it was for. He made it available to all people. Praise the Lord. Listen, I know uh, there's this is an all-inclusive gospel, but there are exclusions, all right? You ready? The only exclusion is if if you exclude yourself. The Bible tells us in Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The only way anybody has ever been excluded from the gospel and from knowing Jesus is if they've excluded themselves. They chose to disobey His word. And that renders your own exclusion. One of the big jokes on pastoral threads and face on Facebook is using the phrase, it was in the bulletin. Everybody always asking questions. Well, I didn't know about this. Well, it was in the bulletin. It was in the bulletin. I'll tell you what, there's going to be no excuse when you get to heaven. And you stand before God and you say, well, I didn't know. Yes, you did know. You look around and you see the trees pointing to him. The rocks crying out in his name is praise. Praise the Lord. Creation lends, uh, lends the knowledge of a creator. And there's a, there's a void in your heart that a measure of faith is supposed to work in tandem with to lead you to the one who created you. And you can ignore all of that and exclude yourself from the gospel. Or you can take advantage of the opportunity that Jesus brought to every man, woman, boy, or girl and when he eliminated every label and limitation so you could come to him and know him as savior it shows us the limitless ability that he has in reaching out to us listen you you read through the christmas story you find that the lord spoke through multiple avenues to reach out to people he spoke through an angel when he spoke to mary to deliver the gospel to her he spoke in a dream to joseph to let him know hey everything will be all right if you follow the plan that i placed in your heart he spoke through the heavenly host uh, as he spoke to the shepherds and they sang uh, their song of hallelujah he spoke through the holy ghost to men like zacharias and elizabeth and and to simeon i mean the holy ghost was at work uh, at christmas time uh, and he spoke through his word listen this really struck a chord in my heart last night uh, our family sat down and we were uh, taking in the nativity story that movie that was produced several years ago and and one of the kids talked about how how it was neat how the wise men how did they know where to go well i, I realized uh, that it was because they'd been studying the word of God hallelujah and they'd been looking at what the prophecies foretold so over here you got some men all they've been doing is looking at his word and he's still speaking to them showing them where to go and then you got some people who may not even known how to read out in the field watching some sheep but God spoke to them hallelujah because he's limitless in his ability to reach men and women with the gospel I, I was reading in a book the other day, it was, a, it was the case for faith by Lee Strobel, and he talked about how God had been speaking to some Islamic folks and Muslims there, and, and it was because, you know, they, they were trying to find the answer that they were looking for. Well, at night in a dream, they, they would see just a vision of Jesus, and he would come to them and tell them to trust in him, or, or he would show them the nail prints in his hand. How, how is this possible to, to some men and women who, who are just serving a made up God and, and, and really they're, they're a violent people well because God loves them and he's not limited hallelujah to anything he can reach them where they are for with God nothing shall be impossible uh, the angel wanted Mary to understand. Uh, listen, I, I know it's not easy to take this in. I know, Mary, it's not easy for you to grasp a hold of the truth uh, of what I just told you. But listen, let me tell you, over yonder there, Elizabeth, I know she's old and she's never had a baby, but she's with child right now because with God, uh, nothing shall be impossible. He tore away every limitation that they may have had. Uh, hallelujah. Praise His name. Uh, and listen, today, this very single day, every single prophet, 
problem that you face, everything, every struggle, every sickness, every pain, if God was able to create the universe and He was able to bring forth His Son out of a virgin's womb, I tell you what, He's able to heal and deliver, set free, and remove every obstacle in your life between you and His will. Praise God. He's, there's nothing impossible with the Lord. It's a gift that is to be regifted. A few years ago, one of the things I tried to burn in the hearts of our young people was that they had to have a relationship with God for themselves. But then once they got it for themselves, they can't keep it to themselves. Hallelujah. Listen, I can't go to heaven based on my mom and dad's relationship with Jesus. I got to go to heaven having a relationship with him myself. But once I have that relationship, that gift that he gave to me, I must give it to other people. I have to re-gift it. Really, uh, anybody in here ever re-gifted something? Don't, don't be ashamed. It's all right. If somebody gave you something that was three sizes too big, you just find somebody three sizes bigger than you. That's... But you may not want to tell him you did that. But Jesus came so you could give him to others, so you could lead him or lead others to him. And we're told in Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What is that talking about? Jesus came to suffer for his fellow man. He came to give everything so that we could find him and we could come under the blood and, and be able to approach his throne. Praise the Lord. But that's not the only reason he came. He came so you and I could lead other people to that same source of life that we found at the cross uh, at Calvary. Listen, he puts his life in us uh, so that we can give that life back to him. Praise the Lord. Uh, listen, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We're not perfect. Anybody been perfect your life, their, their whole life? Maybe the last 30 days. Some people think they are, but they're not. Hey, man. There you go, Seth. I got you, bro. Praise the Lord. But he put his life in us. Tre this treasure in earthen vessels. I'm going to use this illustration. Don't take me wrong. I'm not calling you a dog or a cat, all right? Okay, you understand that? But if you've ever owned a hunting dog or a pet cat, you know sometimes animal instincts kick into those dogs and they go on a hunt, don't they? And those cats too. And, and they go out there. A dog might go and try to find a squirrel or a rabbit. A cat will go and try to find a mouse. And one of the things that usually happens before they tear into that animal to eat it or whatever they're going to do, they bring it to the master. And, and they, I don't want a dead mouse. I don't want a dead rabbit. I don't want any of that blood on the carpet. Get it out of here, you know. Uh, but the reason why they're bringing it to the master is because they're trying to say, aren't you proud of me? I've done what I was created to do. Praise the Lord. Listen, our lives might be a little messy sometimes. We might make mistakes. Uh, but God wants us to bring our lives back to him because that is what we were created to do. Hallelujah. Listen, we were created. I know you're like, Brother Cruz, I'm too sick. I don't have enough talent. I messed up last Thursday. Listen, bring your life to the Lord. He put life inside of you so you could give it and live it for Him. Praise God. So bring Him your sickness. Bring Him your pain. Gift Him your struggles and gift Him your heartaches. I know it's not easy and I know it's messy and I know it's dirty and your fellow man may look at you in disgust. But what I know from experience... When I bring to God things that are broken, I know He's able to mold them and fix them and heal them and restore them. Why? It's because He brings Himself glory through my life. Hallelujah. Oh, so you you got to go to him, Master. You put life inside of me. You save me. And I know I may have made some mistakes, and I know things are out of my control over here. Somebody else treated me this way over here, and it hurt me real bad. But, God, I'm going to bring that situation to you and trust you with it because in the end you're going to bring glory, and people are going to come to know you through that. Hallelujah. 
The blind man brought Jesus uh, his lack of sight, uh, and the Lord gave him his eyesight. Amen. Uh, Jairus brought to Jesus uh, a dead daughter. Listen, uh, who wants a dead daughter? Well, Jesus does. Amen. Uh, Because he knows what he's able to do. Uh, The woman with the issue of blood uh, brought 15 years of sickness uh, and letdowns and heartache. Uh, Oh, but she found Jesus. Amen. Uh, And his virtue. Peter, uh, he he brought to the Lord uh, a cocky attitude. uh, and a failing spirit but the Lord was able to redeem that for his glory and Thomas oh Thomas he brought the Lord doubt what can God do with doubt well God can show you proof to make your faith strong amen and let you know he's got something good for you and he can get glory out of your life Regift the life he gave you give it back to him so he can use it for the glory of himself amen He's a redeeming God. He is a limitless God. And He is the God over the impossible in your life. And and the final thing, we're going to conclude, Sister Gabby. And the ladies, go ahead and come to the uh, music, Sister Katie. Uh, It was the gift. He was the gift that changed everything. I'm going to get Leah real quick if she'll come to me. I tried to gear up for this, and she was a little bit nervous. Come here. She's nervous. Say hi to everyone. <laughs> I tell you what, Leah in our home was a gift that changed everything. If you've had two kids, you need to have three. And you thought number two was hard. Number three, oh man. They say after you have three, you can have as many as you want. Nothing changes after that. But Leah changed everything. I mean, Leah, Leah, just yesterday, Leah, our other two kids were real easy going. They were calm. They were fine. They were usually pretty good. Leah, she's not bad. Are you bad? No, you're not. <laughs> but she's crazy. Are you crazy? You're, yes, you are. <laughs> Last night, we were, I was sitting around the couch. Yeah. And she was, she was over there by the end table. She tried to grab a pen or... Or, a, or my phone or something. I don't know what she was after. And she grabbed it. Well, then after she had that, what she wanted, she still felt the need to knock everything off the table. She just was throwing books and Bibles and everything. And I was just like, why did you do that? And she just sat there and looked at me. She changed everything. I'll tell you what about Leah. Leah was a, a gift that we prayed for, though. She was, she was a gift that we... We, we wanted, Sister Katie and I, when we got married, we wanted to have a lot of kids. Not Sebastian lot, but uh, <laughs> five or six. <laughs> we might have had eight, I don't know. But we, after Hannah and Ethan were born, Sister Katie had some health issues, and, and so we didn't know if we wanted to have a third baby, just knowing all the things that she had to deal with, and And we prayed. There was times when we prayed, Lord, show us if if it's going to be all right. Let us know if it's going to be all right. And I'll tell you what, we were looking for the answer in the wrong place. Uh, We wanted somebody like Sister Widock to just stand up and prophesy to us, you know, and let us know, hey, go ahead, have a baby. Well, we were out here doing a car wash about five years ago, maybe maybe four, uh, with the youth. We were trying to raise money to buy bicycles for India. And um, and we were out there washing cars, and this lady came up, and, and uh, she said, hey, can I pray for you guys? And she started praying for, for me and my wife. It was kind of strange. We didn't know her, and uh, she was a little bit crazy. But, um, but after she got done praying, she, she said, I see God giving you a child. And I was like, whatever, you know. <laughs> a couple years later, Leah comes along. Nobody else told us it was going to be okay. But we remember what that lady said. And that was a gift that changed everything. But it was still limited, you know. You get what I'm saying. But I'm so thankful that Jesus is the gift that changes everything. 
for everybody. Hallelujah. Listen, what did he change? He brought in the new covenant. No longer did we have to live according to the old, old law that was incomplete and imperfect. No longer did we have to try to, to be just a, a, the, the best person in the world and live according to however many laws that, that the Pharisees had added. But Jesus came to fulfill the law and establish a new covenant that not only was it for the Jew, but for the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. Uh, Jesus is the gift uh, that truly changed everything. Hallelujah. And and I'll tell you what, he's a gift that I don't want to keep it to myself. I want your family. I want my extended family. I want everybody to know uh, that their life can be changed by the power of the blood that Jesus shed uh, on Calvary. Aren't you thankful today for the gift that changes everything? Why don't you stand together with us tonight? Oh, his gift is a redeeming gift. I want to read to you a song real quick and then we're going to pray. It's a song by Josh Wilson. It says, O holy night, starry sky, we were dead until tonight. Christmas changes everything. Long lay the world inside our sin. He has come here to forgive. Christmas changes everything. The chorus says, Hallelujah, love has found us. Hope in a manger, our Savior is setting us free. This is rescue. Christ has come to make us new. Oh, Christmas changes everything. Now God has met us where we are, a thrill of hope for hopeless hearts. His perfect love will shatter every fear. We're coming back to life again, and it's all because of Bethlehem. Christmas changes everything. Oh, hallelujah. He is with us. Emmanuel. The Lord, our shepherd, God with us. Hallelujah. And he can change your life tonight. I don't know, maybe somebody in here, you, you know the story, but you don't know the man. You can know him, and he can change everything. Or maybe there's a situation in your life that you just need to be reminded of what he's able to do, how he's still with you. I'll tell you what, tonight's a good night for you. Just to give it all to Him. Even the mess. Even the heartache. Even the struggle. Even the trust issues and the doubt. Let God have it. And let Him work it all out. For your good and for His glory. Hallelujah. I want everyone that will come. Find yourself a place to pray. Oh, and just avail yourself of the gift that changes everything. The gift that changes everything. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that you are the gift that changes everything. Lord, let it change. Let